Welcome to my 2019-2020 NBA predictions. Now, this is where it gets intense because there are a lot of predictions that will be available to make. There's obviously the Eastern Conference, the Western Conference, the NBA Finals, MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, everything we're going to break down in this video, in my opinions. Now, if you guys want to let me know what you guys think, you don't have to go as in depth. You don't have to go your Western Conference, your Eastern Conference. You can just go MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and all those accolades. And if you want to choose an NBA Finals, you can do that too. But I want to hear what you guys think below in the comment section. Who do you think is going to rise and who do you think is going to fall? And let's see if you get right and if I get right. So we can come back to this video in June, July when the playoffs are about to start and see what happens. See if we were correct or if we were just completely wrong. With that said, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, hit the notification button and follow me on Instagram. Now, let's get on to the video. So for my Eastern Conference NBA playoff predictions, I've got the Philadelphia 76ers as the first seed. I think Ben Simmons is going to really have a breakout season. Joel Embiid looks like he's lost a little bit of weight and hopefully he can stay fit for the entirety of the season. And if he can, he's arguably the best big man in the league. Then you've also got Tobias Harris. And then obviously the guys that were added in Josh Richardson and Al Horford who just make this team even better. So I'm going to say that the Philadelphia 76ers will be the first seed in the Eastern Conference. Then I've got the Bucks. I still think Giannis can improve on his game and obviously he was the MVP last season which means he's just going to be even better but I do have the Bucks as the second seed and then I've got the Celtics as the third seed I think Kemba Walker is a better fit for the Celtics than Kyrie it's going to be interesting to see who that second piece to actually lift for the Boston Celtics will be it will probably be Jason Tatum but It'll be interesting to see if he can turn into an MVP type of player or even an all-star type of player because he's still pretty young, but he does have the potential. I've got the Miami Heat as the fourth seed. I'm a Heat fan. I would love us to finish as the fourth seed, bring in another all-star, possibly maybe Chris Paul down the line. I'm not sure, but we could do some work if we can get an all-star caliber player to pair up with Jimmy Butler. And we can also see the development of Tyler Hero in his rookie year, which will be very interesting. I've got the defending champs as the fifth seed, the Brooklyn Nets as the sixth seed, Pacers as the seventh, and the Orlando Magic as the eighth. And obviously, the Detroit Pistons miss out. They were in the playoffs last year. Blake Griffin starting off this year unhealthy. And that's really been his biggest flaw throughout his career. He just hasn't really been able to stay healthy. So I've got the Pistons missing out, as well as the Bulls, the Hawks, the Knicks, the Wizards, the Cavaliers, and obviously the Charlotte Hornets. As for the Western Conference, this is where it gets very, very interesting. I've got the Lakers finishing as the first seed. I think that when Paul George gets back and the Clippers mesh a little bit more, that can easily be a race between the two, but I do think that the Lakers will win the first seed. Now, this is a very, very bold prediction, but I've got the Utah Jazz. I think the Utah Jazz, just based on their chemistry, will have a better regular season than the Clippers, but the Clippers will definitely do better in the playoffs, in my opinion. So I'm going to say that the Utah Jazz will finish as the second seed. The Clippers will finish as the third seed. The Denver Nuggets will finish as the fourth seed. The Trailblazers will finish as the fifth seed. Houston, they obviously have James Harden, who is an absolute stud. It's going to be interesting to see how he meshes with Russell Westbrook, but I just don't think they're going to have the chemistry to start the year, so that's why with the Western Conference being so close, I will have them as the sixth seed. But when the playoffs start, if they are meshed and they actually work well together, they could easily be a top team in the Western Conference. But as of now, I'm going to put them as the sixth seed. The Warriors, they're at the seventh seed. Clay Thompson's most likely not returning. It's just hard to really know where they're going to rank. But I think that D'Lo and Steph could be very, very fun to watch. But with the Western Conference being so stacked, I just have to have them as the seventh seed. And as the eighth seed, I'm going to go with the San Antonio Spurs. You really just can't count out the Spurs every year. If you have Greg Popovich, you're going to be a contending team. So I have the Dallas Mavericks really missing out here. I just think it's very unlucky that they're in the Western Conference because in the Eastern Conference, definitely a playoff team with Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis, but I have them missing out in the Western Conference. Same with the Pelicans, same with the Sacramento Kings, the Thunder, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Phoenix Suns, and of course, the young Memphis Grizzlies, which Ja Morant and JJJ, they're going to be extremely fun to watch. Jaron Jackson Jr. looks like he'll be a stud. And Ja Morant's handles, whew, that man can ball. He can handle the rock. So those are my Eastern and Western Conference Finals predictions. Now, the 2019-2020 NBA MVP. 
There are so many candidates that can win this award and there's obviously a few that really depends, I believe, on how they rank in terms of their standings because you really only win an MVP as a top three seed. It's an unwritten rule in the league. Obviously, there are the occasional players that do win it outside of the top three seed, but typically it's somebody that was a top three seed, which really only leaves a few players because when you look back at my Eastern and Western Conference predictions, I had the Philadelphia 76ers, the Bucks, and the Boston Celtics. Then on the West, I had the Lakers, the Utah Jazz, and the Los Angeles Clippers. That, first of all, eliminates Stephen Curry, who I think will have an incredible season. I think Stephen Curry will probably be the best player in the league in terms of leading the league in points per game. This guy will shoot the lights out every night. There's no Clay Thompson, but at the same time, I just don't think they're going to have a high enough seed for him to win the MVP. So to me, that really only leaves a few players. I don't believe anybody from the Celtics will win it. So in the Eastern Conference, I believe it leaves Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And in the Western Conference, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Kawhi Leonard. James Harden is obviously another MVP candidate. If he averages another 37 points, he may be a guy that people just look at and say, okay, you don't need to be a top three seed to win MVP. We're just going to give it to you because at this point, James Harden is doing things I haven't even ever seen before. This guy is scoring buckets and... He really deserves to win the MVP. He could have won it last year, but I'm going to say that if they're going to base it off winning as a top three seed, then it's hard to put James Harden in there because I just don't think the Rockets will be a top three seed. So honestly, if I'm deciding who I want to win the MVP, I would love if LeBron James at year 17 could go out there and win the MVP, but I just don't know how they're going to play him in terms of load management. I believe that he's probably going to be on a similar length with Kawhi Leonard. I do believe they're both going to have rest management throughout this season and especially LeBron because he is obviously in year 17 and he's really only looking to win championships at this point. I think the MVP days are behind him but that kind of leaves Anthony Davis and the room for Anthony Davis wide open. If Anthony Davis is healthy throughout the entirety of this season, he will average high stats. He at this point will be the face of LA if he re-signs with them for the next five years or so because LeBron eventually will slow down. AD is basically going to be his team if he re-signs with the Lakers and I think to start off LeBron and the rest of the squad is going to look to feed Anthony Davis. Embiid and Ben Simmons I give them a few more years. Giannis obviously if he plays like last season it's very very hard to not put Giannis in the conversation but I'm going to go with a guy that many people wouldn't go with, and that is Anthony Davis. I do think he's the best big man overall. His stats are insane. He will be a top three seed. I'm going to go with Anthony Davis. Let's come back to this video. I may be completely wrong, or I might be surprised. The rookie of the year. The easy option is to say Zion Williamson. This guy is an absolute stud, and I think if we choose a player that isn't Zion Williamson, and we kind of say, if Zion is healthy, it's kind of a little bit of a scapegoat. And honestly, my prediction is that this draft class will be one of the greatest draft classes of all time. Match him up with the 2003 draft class. We may not have the all-star level talent. Like Zion might not be as good as LeBron. RJ Barrett might not be as good as Carmelo Anthony. Ja Morant might not be as good as Dwayne Wade, things like that. But as a whole, I believe that Zion, RJ, Cam Reddish, Ja Morant, Tyler Hero, all these guys are going to be very, very good players in the league. In terms of who will win the Rookie of the Year, I still believe it will be Zion Williamson, but because he just announced that he's having surgery and he's going to be out for the first few weeks of the NBA season, that kind of leaves options definitely available. It kind of leaves Tyler Hero with a wide open spot if the Miami Heat actually decide to play him. And as a Heat fan, I could see Tyler Hero really lighting some teams up out there. I would love to say he would win Rookie of the Year as a Heat fan. That would be absolutely insane. Ja Morant, he's obviously a one-of-a-kind talent. His handles are off the chart. But I'm going to go with a guy that, you know, why not? Tyler Hero. Let the man do his work. Let him win a Rookie of the Year. If the Miami Heat play him over Dion Waiters, he's in the starting lineup. He gets minutes. He can really show what he's about. The thing about Tyler Hero is that he is more than just a shooter. And what do the Miami need? We need a shooter, a playmaker, and a guy that can really create his own shot. And even though he's a rookie, I could see that being Tyler Hero. Defensive Player of the Year. 
I'm going with Giannis. I believe he was very close to winning it last season. I believe he's really going to focus more this season on his defense. I think that Giannis will win the Defensive Player of the Year. Sixth Man of the Year. I actually do believe there'll be a guy that will come up that we haven't really thought of as a Sixth Man yet. And I do believe it will be somebody that will help make a team even better than they originally were thought of, if that makes sense. But I don't know who it's going to be. I'm going to go with Marcus Smart. I believe that Marcus Smart will actually have a very good season this season for the Boston Celtics. He's playing obviously behind Kemba Walker as the point guard for the Boston Celtics. And why not? It's a bit of a bold prediction. It's easy to say Lou Williams or Eric Gordon because these guys have proven it in the past. Marcus Smart is somebody that hasn't proven it, but I'm, not, I'm just going to say that he may be the guy for the sixth man of the year this season. And the most improved player, you know, I may seem biased, but I'm going with Bam Adebayo. I think that he's the starting center for the Miami Heat. He's great on defense. He's definitely improved on the offensive side. I just think that because he didn't really play a whole lot last season, he definitely has the opportunity this year to be a most improved player. So I'm going to say Bam Adebayo. But obviously, there are all sorts of other guys. Lonzo Ball will be interested to see how he plays. Gordon Hayward, can he return to his all-star caliber form? Pascal Siakam, he is the star player for the Toronto Raptors. So there are heaps of guys. In fact, Terry Rozier, the main guy on the Charlotte Hornets now. But I'm going to go with Bam Adebayo. Now, in terms of who will win the NBA Finals, it's very hard to predict this at the start of the season, but bring it back to the old days. Lakers vs. 76ers, we know about the rivalry. Obviously, as the season progresses, we're going to know more and more. But in the Eastern Conference, I mean, you've got the Bucs and the 76ers. I, at this stage, am taking the 76ers over the Bucs. I think they have a much better roster overall. But Giannis, out of every player, is the better player if you're comparing the 76ers and the Bucs. But I think Ben Simmons will improve on his defensive game and he will be able to improve as a whole on his offensive game too, which will lead the 76ers to the NBA Finals. And then obviously, if you're looking at the Western Conference, it is so hard to predict. But LeBron and Davis... That's such a good duo. At this stage, it could definitely be the Clippers making it to the NBA Finals. But I'm going to go with the Lakers. I've got to see LeBron one more time in the NBA Finals. But hey, it's a prediction. We'll see what happens. With that said, let me know what your predictions are below in the comment section. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new for more NBA content. The season has started, baby. So we're going to be uploading a lot more NBA content. And with that said, if you enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you in my next one. I am out. Peace.